Hey coaches, in today's video I'm going to go over three plays you can run from the same formation that really messes with the defense. Hey coaches, Coach Mackey here and welcome to my channel. This is the first time visiting my channel, welcome. And if you love to learn about the spread, con the spread offense, RPOs, passing concepts, and running schemes from the spread offense, please smash that subscribe button. And if you find this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Now, Coach Mack has a great video down, and I'll link it in the description below, on sequential football and, and different ways to run different plays from the same formation, same motion, to really dick with the defense. And I think that's amazing. And I think coaches should do that more. Now, where did he get this idea from? From the great... Delaware wing tee. Yes, I know coaches piss off if you if you if you're gonna give me any lip for it. The Delaware wing tee is a great freaking offense if you like to run the ball. But not only that, this book right here, it is amazing just to think about play calling wise and how you can do different things out of the same formation and call plays based on what the defense does. So the defense takes away one thing, boom, you have the same a different play, same formation, same motion. Well, I got to thinking. I do that, and I want to go over how we work it and everything. So in today's video, I'm going to go over how we run three different plays from our two-back with push motion to really mess with the defense. Okay, so every sequence has to have a starting play for us that is straight up inside zone. Now, as you can see, this is our two-back two set. And we are we like the two back set. We don't have the H back. We have two backs. We bring our slot in. And unless I tag it with anything, when we go in this formation, we are always pushing motion with the F. Always. He is usually a wide receiver. He doesn't block. He can't crack or anything like that. So we're not going to use him like that. I know that sucks. If you have a guy two actual tailbacks, you can use him in there and do a lot more different things. For us, we just put them in there, send it on in motion. Backside, we have a simple rule. If you are the single receiver and we tag our inside zone, you either have a three-step hitch or you have a slant based on the corner's leverage. If the corner is outside of you, you take the slant. If the corner's deep, you take the hitch. If y'all don't like that, that's fine. You can just keep it as a normal hitch. We just do it every single day in practice that we get good at it and that's what we do, so we just decide to do it. Now, for the wide receivers, we are blocking most dangerous man but this guy is right here usually the why you tr try not to block this linebacker because this is the quarterback secondary read so you most of the time are pushing to the safety and then the R you're blocking the corner this is I, I know what y'all are thinking defensive coaches um why would they be in this I don't know this is what we get most of the time about 90% of the time we the team staying too high go figure I don't know I, I'm not the defensive coordinator I like it when they do this because it helps us now for the line we've gone away from from straight up double teaming and then pushing vertical we actually just we kind of block it like a wide zone you just you got your tracks you if we're going zone to the left everybody three steps to their gap and then climbing three steps and then climbing someone will show up so just stay on your tracks i know a lot of um zone purists don't like that that's just what we do it works for us if it doesn't you can do what you want to do that's fine the back now this is what we tell them you are reading the you're reading the a a gap to the play side so this is the guy he's reading if he goes out he just bangs it if he goes in he goes wide it can hit for us it can hit it has hit outside to backside that's what i like about it it actually it helps us so he is open crossover pushing that front side a gap and the quarterback your read is this end if the end comes up the field you hand it off if the end crashes y'all know what to do then you pull and you run and now you're reading this guy if he attacks you flip it out if he sits you go now that's the first play in the sequence and you're going to keep doing that over and over again and then you will get the defense to do what they normally do which is the scrape exchange and that's when you come up with the next play here it is first play out of this they had defenses have to stop our inside zone in order for us to go do anything Anything else if they let us run inside zone a thousand times we're gonna run it a thousand times I know I'm a passing guy but if that works I'm gonna keep doing it I'm not dumb that much <laughs> so we're pushing him blocking man on right here we're reading this guy quarterback sees what he's supposed to do as you can tell he just hands it off we get a nice 10 yard gain and we just keep keep going on that's what we do play number one so the next play is this is what we see when we run the inside zone over and over again with this kind of motion he will come in he will go over top and then he snaps right to the to the comet motion 
that's great. Once the kids come back and they tell you, hey, coach, they're scrape exchanging, and then this guy goes, hey, coach, that linebacker is, is, is going straight to the bubble. I can't block it. It's hard. You go, fine, we're going to lock it up and run a snag behind it. So we call this zone man. You can call it zone lock, whatever it is. It just talks to these two guys backside. So zone man or lock, let's just call it man. He's manning up the defensive end. Okay. That is his man. He's got it. It depends on what this guy does for him. So if he is in a three technique, he just base blocks it just like that. If this cat is in a one technique, then he just blocks down. Whatever it is, he just, that's what it, that, those are the rules. So you got a guy outside of you, you base block him. You got a guy inside of him, uh, inside of you, you just wash him down. So then that puts the read right here for the quarterback. This is his read. Now we run a snag route with our Y. He just sits there. We treat it just like the snag that we normally do. You go six yards yards one yard deeper than this six yards no deeper than six yards though we find that these linebackers they play really close i don't know if if, if nick saban is telling his guys where to line up but these guys for us a, a four or under so we say no deeper than six but one yard behind the the linebacker for our r we just have him run a po i mean a uh, vertical route so the quarterback comes up he sees do i have this yes i'm gonna throw it if not put him in motion now i'm reading this guy he comes in i throw it right behind him he sits back i hand it off and what's going to happen is he's going to go inside he's going to take him he's going to run himself out of the play run himself out of the play it's going to be wide open right there that's the second play in this in this sequence where you just want to just mess with them so much so now they've been playing games they're doing something they're stopping our inside zone so we got to hit him up with the second play the second play we're going to lock on backside we're going to read a linebacker if he triggers we're just going to throw a nice little snag right behind them to make them pay for taking away our base play so we have our push motion zone we're locking backside look at that vacates now we throw it and we get what we can yes that's a dude but that's what happens so again he's locking on this is who we're reading he's running this look at this grass right here so what we're going to do quarterback sees grass he throws to it a hey, you defensive coordinators i know you like to talk crap about rpos nobody is down the line of scrimmage you can't say anything this time but so again catch it and go simple simple pitch and catch all right so you've hit him with the inside zone they start uh scrape exchanging so you you hit him with the um the lock in the backside and throw him the snag most defensive coordinators once you do that a couple of times they're like f you i'm bringing the blitz i'm getting in your face i'm going man to man you can't stop me that's when you you dial up a play action pass now my favorite play action pass y'all know it y cross and it works beautifully in this sequence okay so we've got again push motion now for the l outside release vertical for the y under the sam over the mic a pick in a spot about 15 to 18 yards on the opposite hash we rep this every day you can give him freedom he can sit it down if he sees anybody just find the grass stay in grass backside 15 yard dig you're finding grass we we don't do it as a, a post dig i'm not very good at teaching it i'm just i'm better at teaching go 15 yards hang a left or right depending on who is it working then find the grass and stay in the grass so we got slide how we do it is we match it up with slide protection so these guys right here slide protecting to the left making it look good i mean it's a half slide man up he comes up and he's responsible for one to two this is who the running back's responsible for the f goes in motion quarterback's thinking one two three hitch i picked that up from coach uh moorhead he he has a, a an amazing youtube video i'll link it in the description talking about his flood concept but he likes the one two three hitch then to number one unlike the r r4 or whatever one two three throw i can never get my guys to go one two three throw i find that it works a little bit better going one two three hitch throw so it's one two three hitch number one hitch number two hitch number three and then he's running the throw to number four it is an amazing play and it it, it, it punches the defense right in the face when they sell out to stop the run so now you've hit him with the inside zone you've hit him with the, the lock in the inside zone throwing the snag next thing you want to go deep and take a shot you run the caddy play now i love why cross we call it caddy stole it from the end zone and this is what we do push motion 
He's going one to two to three. Now, I'm going to be honest, the DB played a horrible ball, but one-on-one -on -one can't do anything better than that. Hitch, throw. He's not looking for it. Nice catch, and we go it. That is as simple as you can get. Now, here's another example of it, and, and a little bit better. We, we've been hitting him with the inside zone. We've been hitting him with the M snag. So now, what do we do? We call caddy. They're capping this over here. There's, there's color in that area. Watch how wide open the middle of the field becomes with this motion. We push motion. They're bringing a blitz. Boom. Look at all that space right there. We would be dumb not to run Y caddy and just throw it right. I mean, it is so easy, and that's the beauty of sequential play calling. So there you go. Three plays out of the two back. Sequential. Thank you, Wing T. If y'all do anything different, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. I want to get better at this because I think this is something you can use to actually play faster. I read somewhere that Chip Kelly does something like this, six plays at a each formation and helps him go super fast. I want to do something like that. Tempo is something I am looking forward to or looking to, to study more of during this offseason. And before you go, as a token of my appreciation for, for doing everything that y'all have been doing and helping me as a coach, I got a link down below to three drills I think you should run if you're going to run the air raid. And it's just my way of giving back to y'all. And until next week, coaches, let's continue to master the spread, score points, and have fun.